started for the kingdom since my life he controls since I gave my heart to Jesus the longer I serve him the sweet I have wondered about the sights of that city and all that my eyes shall behold. I will see all the wonders when I enter that city, there forever be safe in his fold. Some Where the Son of God 
Thank you. I'll let you be seated tonight. We'll turn over to Brother Ashley. Uh, Now, if you're saved, you can't get lost. (laughs) (laughs) Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. Matthew, chapter 18. (coughs) Beginning with verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child, in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off, and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and go into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, He rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming to your house. Thank you, Father, for the fellowship that we have. Thank you for your presence with us through your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. We pray that you would help us to have open hearts, open minds, ready to receive your truth and apply it to our lives. Help us to please you in all that we do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Who's the greatest? Muhammad Ali said he was. <laughs> uh, and he was a great fighter. But it doesn't matter who's the greatest fighter or the greatest mechanic or the greatest singer or the greatest whatever. What matters is being great in the kingdom of heaven. And the least is the greatest, Jesus taught us. It says he called a little child unto him and set him in the midst. Now, One thing we can notice there, that there were kids around Jesus. Uh, Jesus said, allow the little children to come to me and don't keep them away. The disciples wanted to keep them away, but he said, let them come, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And I can imagine this little child being called, how old it was, I don't know. (laughs) Uh, Whether it was two or five or ten or whatever, it was still a child. But uh, he says uh, there was a little child, and I assume he's somewhat younger. But he says, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I know that a lot of Christians act like little children. (laughs) 
but not in this context. Little children are easy to have faith. It is in their nature to believe. They become skeptical as they grow older and are disappointed by what people tell them at times. But it's easier for them to believe in a God that loves them and in Jesus that loves them than it is for an older person. And if a person is not saved when they're in those childhood years, the chances of them ever being saved go way down. The percentage is much, much less as time goes by. And uh, he says, Wherefore, whosoever shall humble himself as this little child, the same as the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Children are humble. They are correctable. Uh, now, as time goes by, they get just a little bit more rebellious, a little bit more lip, and <laughs> as other things as time goes by, but they're correctable. Uh, they know that uh, the adult is bigger than they are, and, and uh, they know to have fear, uh, not terror. You're not terrified of mom and dad. You're afraid of the spanking you might get, but you weren't terrified of them because you also loved them and you went to them for comfort and for protection, uh, whatever the need might be. And so that's, that's the child. And that's the way we're supposed to be with our Heavenly Father. We come uh, believing, we come obedient, we come knowing that He's bigger than we are and He can do whatever He wants to do to us, and, but we trust in His love and we come as little children to Him. He says... Whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now the word offend means to cause to stumble, uh, to cause to, to uh, mess up. And um, these are strong words that he uses here. Uh, if we keep someone out of the kingdom of God, now... I'm not sure, uh, as I read this passage, whether these little ones have believed and are saved or not. I believe if they were really saved, they'll always be. <clears throat> but uh, he says it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he drowned in the depths of the sea. Have we ever caused someone to not want to follow Christ? Serious words. Have we caused them to to not believe in Christ or to, to give up on the church and to give up on God. Uh, according to that, the best thing for us to do would be be drowned in the middle of the sea. Um, we need to be careful. Always remember who we are with everything that we say and do because new believers especially have not got their foot on the ground real solid yet and it's easier for them to become discouraged and we're supposed to be encouragers of one another now I know we're not supposed to do it for the praise of men but it feels pretty good doesn't it when someone gives us a compliment and uh, we should compliment one another uh, compliment brother Steve on his song this morning uh, compliment your Sunday school teacher on, on the lesson Compliment one another on their walk with God, with their faithfulness uh, to come to church. If you can't think of anything else other than that they come, thank them for coming. Compliment them and, uh, and encourage them. He says, It must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. I don't believe he's saying there that it's God's desire that there be offenses that some of them stumble. He's saying it's going to happen but woe to the person who causes it to happen. He says, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot cause thee to stumble or cause you to mess up, uh, cut them off, cast them from thee, for it's better to enter into life halt or maim than rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Now, how many of us would cut our hand off so that we wouldn't reach for that thing that we don't need? <laughs> Uh, we wouldn't do it, would we? We'd say, no, I'll pass on it this time and keep my hand. But that's what he's telling us to do. Uh, take whatever steps are necessary, whatever self-discipline we've got to do to discipline ourselves 
and do the right thing, follow Christ, be pleasing to him. He says, if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. <clears throat> wonder what would have happened if King David had plucked out that eye and uh, been a good king with just one eye instead of looking where he shouldn't have been looking. Uh, it caused him to mess up. And his son said, well, if dad can do it, I can do it. And uh, one of his sons, you know the story, raped his half-sister. And uh, one of the sons rebelled against him. Uh, one of them killed the one that raped the half-sister. And uh, it just brought chaos into his entire family and chaos into the kingdom of Israel. And so we need to be careful what we see, what we do, how we act. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. <clears throat> for the Son of Man has come to, to save that which is lost. Um, God, the, the little children, the, the new believers, the young Christians, have someone on their side in heaven, is what he's saying. And uh, we need to be on their side also. And again, be encouragers. And I uh, was not always like I should have been with my kids. Stephanie can probably vouch for that. Uh, it's easy if they've done ten things and you're proud of nine of them and one that you're not proud of. It's easy to spend all your time talking about the one you're not proud of. <laughs> and we can do that with one another. We need to be encouragers. We need to lift one another up in, in our walk with the Lord. And in the last few verses here, he's talking about his concern for those that are lost, those that are in trouble. He says, if a man says, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, he'll leave the ninety and nine and go looking for the one. And there's more joy. Doesn't mean that he didn't care for the ninety and nine. He wants to keep them too. <laughs> but uh, he's concerned about the one that's lost. God is always concerned about the lost. And we should be concerned about those that are lost. And uh, he says, It's not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. So let's, let's be mindful of those that are uh, newer in the faith than we are, newer in their walk. Let's not discourage them. Let's encourage. We can admonish, we can correct as necessary, but let's make sure that the encouragement is greater than the discouragement because Jesus was an encourager. He was a lover. He loved us and gave himself for us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the wisdom that it gives us if we will listen and follow. Thank you for the admonishment that we walk close to you and be mindful of those that you love just as much as you love us. Thank you for loving us all equally, even though we're all different. And Father, thank you for this opportunity to come together this evening and allow you to speak to us through your word, by your Holy Spirit. If there's any decision that needs to be made here this evening, may we be obedient to come forward and do what needs to be done if it needs to be made public. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.